Today we'll create a visual indicator that allows the user to see events tracked on a particular date. The focus in this video is having the ability to select any month within a calendar year. If an event was logged for that date, we indicate it with the green background. The calendar grid will serve as a quick reference to see the frequency of which an event is tracked. This project we're using React, Next.js specifically, Tailwind CSS for styling, JavaScript for interactivity, and UState, which is a React front-end hook to help manage the state of our date selection. So to start us out, we have a Next.js project which will represent the home page. For demonstration purposes, we have an array of objects that's gonna represent an event. However, each event can easily be retrieved from a database if you're including this in a full stack project. Now let's create a component to display the days in a selected month. I'm going to name my calendar.js. We'll add a const name calendar and we'll pass in events. Within the const, we're gonna return a div with the name calendar that's enclosed. Be sure to include an export default so it can be used throughout the project. Now let's import this into the page.js where the calendar should be displayed. We'll bring in the component underneath the H1. Be sure to save the file. Now let's take a look at our local host to see what it looks like. On our home page, we currently have the title calendar being displayed. We'll start by gaining access to use state, which is a React front end hook. Now let's go ahead and build a little bit of functionality. First, we'll start by creating two state variables. The first is named selected month. The other will be selected year. Selected month will use the date object from JavaScript to get the current date and time. The get month method returns the month of the date as a zero index value, zero for January, one for February, two for March and so on, ending with 11 for December. The get full year method is gonna return the four digit year as 2024 or 2025, et cetera. Now let's create two handle change functions. The first one being handle month change. The second one being handle year change. These functions will be triggered when the user selects a different month from the dropdown. The e.target.value gets the value from the selected option, which is a string. We'll convert it to a number using the JavaScript number method. The handle month and handle year change will provide the functionality to handle the change for the respective month and year based on the user's selection. To implement the functionality in the state variables, first we'll have a HTML select tag and we'll give it a value of selected month which is going to represent the current month based on the state variable that we created earlier. We'll give it an on change handler, which will pass in the handle change month function. Now we need a way to hold these months in an array and we're gonna use the array.from method which is a JavaScript method in order to hold the months. We'll set the first argument length, which specifies the array size to 12. The second argument is a mapping function, which is gonna take two parameters. The first is unused, which is gonna be represented by underscore. The second is index, which represents the current index of the array which is zero to 11. Inside the select, we're gonna need options. So for each index in the array, zero through 11, we want an option element created. We're gonna include the key, which will be the index. The value provided is gonna be the index for each month, January being zero, February being one, March being two, etc. Inside of the option, we'll use the date object. This is gonna help us get the full name of the month. The date object will take in two parameters, the zero and the index. This is going to create a new date object, which is going to represent the year. And we're using the to local string method, which is going to convert the date object to a string representing the full month in the user's local storage. So for me, it's gonna be October, but depending on when you see this video, it could be any of the months throughout the year. Now let's test out the month dropdown by selecting different options within the month. And as you can see, it works just fine. The year select element will work just as the month. So we'll pass in the selected year as the value. The on change handler will pass in as the on change handler. We'll use the array.from to generate an empty array again, and this time we'll set the length to 10 because we're gonna go 10 years out. Feel free to adjust this based upon your personal needs. For each index, we're gonna generate an option tag. The value for each option is gonna be set to 2024 plus the index, which we know is gonna go 10 years out, which will be 2033. The inner text option is also set to 2024 with the index, and this is gonna be displaying the corresponding year in the dropdown. So now let's test it out. So as you can see, we now have all of the years populated and we have the ability to select each year. So with the ability to select a month within a specific year in place, let's focus on displaying the days in said month. And if there's an event that occurred, let's indicate it within the grid layout. So first we'll need a variable named days and month and we'll set it to the date object. We're gonna pass in the selected year and selected month 
We'll add one to the selected month because remember it's a zero base index. And we'll also include the dot get dates function. Then we'll create a variable named days and we'll set it equal to array dot from. And this is going to give us the ability to create an empty array. The length of this array needs to be set to the days in month. Ultimately, what we want to do is capture the index because that's going to represent the days in a month. And we'll add one to the index because we know the array starts with zero. Now we're ready to render the dates on screen. So let's create a div with the class name of grid and we'll give it seven columns representing seven days in a week. We'll start by mapping over the days array and for each day we want to render a block. Now we want to capture the current date and we're going to use the date object and pass in the selected year, the selected month and we'll say day minus one. You may need to tweak this a little bit based upon your location. What it's doing is it's capturing the local day and because the way it's seeing my date, I had to subtract one day in order for the days to match up. To capture each event from the events array, we'll use the dot find method which will search through the events array to find each event that matches the current date. Within the callback function, an event date is created from the event state string within the callback function and create it from the event state string that we just mapped over. The return statement is going to do a comparison to check whether the day, the month and year of the current date matches the event date. This normalization is going to make sure that the time component doesn't affect the comparison. Now we want a way to distinguish the date when an event was logged. We'll create a const name color and we'll say if an event was found with the current date, the background color is going to be set to green. Otherwise, we'll keep it as the default, which is gray. Finally, let's render a block for each day. So we'll give a div a key of day. The class name will need to be a temporal literal so that we can pass in the variable color. In the div, let's include a span and let's pass in date enclosed in curly brackets. Go ahead and save this file. Let's go back to our page.js. And inside of the calendar component, let's pass in events and let's set it equal to events which will be pulling in the information from the events array. Now, if we save this file and check out our local host, we'll see that days that we have an event log within the array object are now distinguished by a green background color in our day block grid. So this is perfect. So we've just created a simple way to distinguish when events were logged by day. This could be the starter for a much larger project. I hope you found this quick tutorial useful. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribing. Any comments or feedback, leave it in the suggestions below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.